Today's video is crowdfunded by you and sponsored by Teflo.com. Dogs are a species that coexist with us as people because we bred them to interact with people, so it would certainly make sense that many dogs would kind of stress when we leave because they can't be with us all the time. So if your dog whines or barks or chews and claws at the door, there's a good chance they might have separation anxiety. I'm gonna tell you what to do about that in today's video. Make sure you are subscribed to my videos so you get to see all of them and get the latest advice I have to offer. Also, click thumbs up to show your support for our videos. Like me on Facebook to get the most out of our dog training community at facebook.com slash thezachgeorge and consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash zachgeorge with a contribution of two to five dollars a month. That will help us make even better videos for you. How does your dog act when you leave him or her alone? Tell me in the comments below. Now let's go in and meet Mira and Cole Colston and find out what's going on. Mira, tell me a little bit about Colston's personality. Uh, he's a very happy dog. He's very playful. He's extremely, extremely sweet. Um, he loves, loves people. Wait, wait, you say he loves people. I'll tell you something. When I met mm -hmm. him a couple of days ago, I came over here to meet you guys and he went crazy when he saw me out there. He was like, who are you? What are you doing over here? What was all that about? Whenever he meets someone for the first time, it's often what happens. He just needs a little bit of time just to get to know you. And then there's a switch that happens and it's just, okay, let me go get my ball. I'm ready to play. We actually got him right before he made it to the SPCA. So he's, we think he's a little older than three uh, and we've had him for a little bit more than two years now. The, the foster house where we got him from told us that he was a German Shepherd Weimariner mix. Yeah. Yeah, he's a giant dog. He really mm -hmm. is. He's a gentle giant, though. Exactly. He is. Usually. He is. He's about usually. The main issue we have is that he has really, really bad separation anxiety. Um, so he hates when we leave. He's really, really attached to, um, to my husband and I. And we, unfortunately, whenever we go to work every day, we have to kennel him because otherwise he destroys everything. Um, whenever one of us leaves in the car, he's crying, trying to jump over the fence. You actually put him in the kennel when you leave. Mm -hmm. Now, for some dogs with separation anxiety, that can spell disaster. It, it, it depends on the dog though. Mm -hmm. When he's in the kennel, does he tend to bite at the kennel or anything like that to your knowledge? In the past too, we've tried to put an old t-shirt in there, an old piece of clothing so that he feels more comfortable, but then we come back and it's in a million pieces. Oh gosh. All right, gosh. so if you leave things in there, sometimes he'll destroy those, but he yeah. doesn't necessarily cause himself harm while he in the doesn't. crate. He doesn't, he right. doesn't. And that's good because there are varying degrees of separation anxiety. Right. It really just depends on the dog. With a dog that is likely to uh, cause themselves harm, we would never want to put them in a crate. It can vary tremendously as to why certain dogs behave this way. Uh, do you have any knowledge as to his past? We were told that with his first family, he was in, in the kennel for extended periods of time, 24 hours, 36 yeah. hours. So we think that he got that from his first family. I see, so even being in a kennel, he has this like early uh, experience. Signs of this behavior are often following you around the house or pacing. Does he do anything like that? He's definitely following us more than other people. Um, he also likes to be in the same room where we are. So let's say we take a nap. He's going to be taking a nap right next to us. Chewing and uh, barking or digging at the doors or anything. Does he do anything like that? These are also very common signs well, of separation anxiety. If one of us leaves, um, he's definitely going to be at the door barking, um, scratching, He's been up in the windows to try to get out. He loves you guys. He really does. <laughs> so there are worse problems to have in mm -hmm. a dog than a dog that wants to be with you all the time. The plus side is you have a dog that's incredibly bonded to you, and that is the most essential ingredient when teaching a dog other things. The actual cause of separation anxiety is unknown. There's not a lot of hard science on why dogs go through this, but in reality, I suspect there are a lot of reasons for this, uh, including a traumatic life experience, kind of like you described mm -hmm. early on in life. I've noticed in my personal experience too, uh, when I work with dogs that have been separated from their mother at a young age, hmm. that they often will have increased rates of separation anxiety. All that being said, uh, puppies under the age of five months old will exhibit a lot of the symptoms of separation anxiety. But the fact is, if you have a really young puppy, you need to be spending a lot of time with them anyway. Uh, it's also important to mention, we never punish a dog who's going through these issues. We have to be very patient. This can take anywhere from weeks to months to years to a lifetime 
with some dogs depending on their severity. One of the things that I hope we can do today is get him comfortable with being left alone in a controlled environment in a room that's mm -hmm. not necessarily his kennel because I think that might help as well. That would be awesome. uh, so Mira, I'd kind of like to assess the degree of separation anxiety that Colston has. Uh, what would happen if you guys drive around the block? Do you think he's likely to exhibit this behavior or? Definitely. He's already like mm -hmm. circling you. Look at that. That's a sign sometimes that a dog is a bit anxious. So we're going to see how he acts here. Okay, wow, wow. That's what we call separation anxiety. Come here. Okay. If you look into his eyes, you can tell that he's like, okay, where are you going? It's gonna be okay, buddy. I'm gonna try and reassure him because I don't want him to freak out too much here. It was clear that Colston had pretty immediate effects of coping with being left alone. I decided to try and engage him to make him more comfortable, and this took about two seconds to get him into a playful mood. Trouble is, I've got a busy few months and I can't be here when he's left alone. So Colston has now made the decision, okay, parents are gone, let's party. Definitely textbook separation anxiety. He wanted to be with you and was very frustrated by the fact that he couldn't be with you. Uh, I'm curious to see what your existing communication is with him. One of the characteristics of the domestic dog is that we created them for all intents and purposes to work on our behalf, to work with human beings. So it would be natural that when we leave them, that they are a little thrown off by that. Dogs like to be with people. This is one of their most interesting and unique features and one of the reasons they're such a special species. Very smart dog looking to you directly in the eyes, trying to see what you're going to ask next. But when you're dealing with separation anxiety, it's not a matter of step one, step two, step three to teach like we do in obedience. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It does. We have to address the underlying issue and why they're feeling anxious and try and make them more comfortable. The reason many people become frustrated with teaching their dogs is they wait for a real life event to take place, like when they're confronted with a squirrel and their dog starts pulling. The time to address behaviors is before they occur and to set up actual training instances. So in the case of separation anxiety, we wanna make sure that we get our dog comfortable with being left alone for six minutes before we leave them alone for six hours. In general, with separation anxiety, it's a good idea to try and get your dog comfortable in a controlled area, but not necessarily an area that's too confined like a crate. I wanted to see how Colston did when we left him in a room alone for just a second while we remained in the house. You can see that the second the door closes, he immediately starts to whine because he's feeling anxiety and scratching at the door. When you're rewarding your dog for calm behavior and not being too anxious, you have to identify those very small moments of anything that indicates that their anxiety is subsiding even a little bit. We're not looking for a calm, perfect dog in these initial stages. And encourage him to be really calm as well. Do what you would do with a young child. It's gonna be okay, I'll be right back. That's kind of the vibe we're trying to right communicate back. to our dog. Right back. And then you're gonna shut the door and we're just gonna wait a few seconds here. One, two, three. Now go in there, reassure him. Let him know that you like it. Focus on tiny bits of progress whenever dealing with anxiety. One of the primary reasons that dogs become anxious when we leave is just because they're bored and they want something to do. Uh, something like a Kong goes a really long way to preoccupying a dog and keeping them interested in something. So they don't get so bored, so they don't bark, so they don't whine, and so they don't become destructive. Now the way these work is you can put treats like this inside of them, uh, or you can put peanut butter on the outside or frozen chicken broth. I mean, you can get really creative with this and it's kind of hard to get the treats out so it keeps them interested, engages their brain a little bit. And while this is no cure for separation anxiety, it does help to alleviate any anxiety that many dogs might be having. PetFlow has toys, treats, accessories, and especially dog food. What I love about PetFlow.com is that you can have your dog food shipped straight to your door. You never have to think about it again. You can set up recurring delivery and you'll get 15% off of your first purchase when you enter code ZachGeorge15 when you check out. Get free shipping on all orders over $49 after all discounts are applied. Just visit PetFlow.com slash ZachGeorge today. <laughs> You're so much dog, do you understand that? Petting your dog calmly, encouraging calmness are all things that will contribute to reducing anxiety within your dog. What I'd like to do right now is put Colston in the room, see if he stays pretty preoccupied with the Kong and the toy.
toy and hopefully his anxiety will be reduced a little bit. If your dog is an extreme case of separation anxiety and you've gotta be gone for eight hours a day and they're likely to hurt themselves if you're not there, then you might wanna consider doing something like doggy daycare where they can be around people while you're working through these issues. Now I'm about to show you guys the single best thing you can do to dramatically reduce not only separation anxiety but most types of anxiety altogether. You guessed it, exercise. Now, if you have a low key dog, a walk around the block for 10 to 20 minutes first thing in the morning might do the trick to reduce their anxiety. However, if your dog is really high energy, you're gonna wanna play lots of fetch with them or do something that really gets their energy out. Think about how you feel when you exercise. You feel a lot better when you're buzzing after a workout and you just feel relaxed and happy. Your dog will feel the same way. So get in the habit of doing this before you have to go anywhere for any significant period of time. He's like a dinosaur. Ready, go get it. <laughs> There are lots of various aspects to teaching fetch. The most problematic one is letting go or bringing it back to you. I have a playlist in the description that will tell you everything you need to know about teaching your dog fetch if you have any issues. Tell me if your dog has separation anxiety like this. If so, how bad is it? Tell me in the comments below. In my next video, we're gonna meet crazy, hyper, excited, seven-month-old puppy, Zeus. He's a German Shepherd dog. He's exactly the kind of dog that I know a lot of you have, and we're going to attempt to teach him how to walk on a leash without pulling. That will definitely be a challenge. Now, if you enjoyed this video, click thumbs up, like me on Facebook, and consider being a patron on patreon.com. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are really helping us go to the next level. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video. It should be a blast. We'll see you next time. If you need help teaching your dog how to play fetch, check out 10 Tips for Teaching Fetch. Did you ever wonder about the dominant Smith in dog training? That video will explain everything. Is your dog nervous of strangers? I'll show you how to get them more comfortable. Do you ever wonder how to reward your dog with toys? This video will show you exactly what to do.